Question for you. When it comes to alternate picking, what is the single trickiest aspect? That's right, string crossing. It's going to require the most amount of energy expended and therefore the most amount of practice to get it under control. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple string crossing routine slash workout that you can do whenever you feel like your string crossing needs some attention. Let's check it out. So just briefly before we dive into this workout, we're going to talk about two different types of string crosses that you've probably heard about, but in case you haven't, I'm going to just mention them now. We have two different types called inside picking and outside picking. Now, inside picking is where your pick will hit the inner edge of two strings. So, for example, if I'm playing a note on the third string with a downstroke and then I hit the next lower string, so lower in pitch, it'll appear to be higher in height, but lower in pitch. If you do that with a down on the third string and up on the fourth, they call that inside picking because your pick hits the inner edge of those two strings. Right? Kind of like that idea. Outside picking is the opposite of that. If we were to do a down on the fourth string and the next note was on the third string, that would be an up. They would call that outside picking because your pick is hitting the outer edge of those two strings. So we're going to be talking about inside and outside picking on occasion throughout this. So I just wanted to clarify that in case there were any questions. So for this routine, we need a subject. And what I'm going to do is show you what I use as my basic subject here. This is very flexible. You can change this to be whatever you want, but I'm going to show you the one that I've been using that has been really uh, helpful for me. So it begins with uh, a little pattern that goes like this. Kind of melodic, kind of cool to listen to. That's going to make it easier for you to put in the amount of time you're going to need in order to get anything from this. Uh, it's probably helpful if it sounds cool. So let me explain what's going on here. We've got 12th fret on the third string G. Then we're going to bounce it off of the ninth fret on the D string, which is a B. We're going to do it two times. So regardless of whether you start on a down or an up, I'm going to start on a down for this, I suppose. I'm going to do it two times. Then what we're going to do is we're going to change the notes on the highest of the two strings, the G string. We're going to change it from the 12 to 11, which is F sharp. So now we're going from F sharp to B two times. And we're going to change it again. We're going to go to the 9th fret. Now we've got both notes at the 9th fret. So it's going to produce E over to B again. I'm going to do that two times. And notice that my left hand index finger is doing a little roll there. That's going to help keep the notes separate and not ring together. So, so far we have this. Now to wrap it up, we're going to go back to the 11th fret. And that's going to complete round one. Now, part two is essentially the exact same thing. The only difference is I'm changing the low note. So instead of B at the 9th fret on the 4th string, I'm going to change it to the 10th fret, which is a C. I'm going to use my middle finger here. So there'll be no rolling for this portion of it. Every note has its own designated finger, so you don't need to worry about the roll here. Uh, the real benefit to this is it just gives you a little you know, variation in sound. So again, I'm bouncing each of the higher notes. off of the static low note, in this case C. So when you put the whole thing together, you get this. And there you have it. This is going to be our guinea pig for our workout. So internalize this, memorize it, and then we're going to be able to get started. So now that we have established the melodic material that we're going to use for this, uh, one thing you're definitely going to need is, surprise, surprise, a metronome. It does not matter if you have a physical one like I do, or you got one on your phone, or wherever on your tablet. It doesn't matter. What you're going to do is we're going to start at a nice slow tempo. Again, I like using 60 beats per minute to start. This is pretty standard. <laughs> 
nothing really new here. But what we're going to do is we're going to play through uh, the lick just a couple of times. We don't need to spend a heck of a lot of time here. We just need to establish uh, a baseline tempo to be able to launch from. So you might go something like this. Now, if you can do it one whole time all the way through perfectly, then great. I, I think you could probably safely bump up because what we're trying to do here is find a tempo where it starts to get uh, a little cooking, where we start to have a hard time to be able to play that whole thing one time. So we're kind of looking for what we could call our ceiling today. So that was 60 beats per minute. I'm going to bump it up to 65. Do the same thing. Sometimes I'll do a little more than one round just to make sure it wasn't a fluke, if you know what I mean. All right? So, but again, we're not spending a heck of a lot of time. Go to 70. And so on and so forth. So what I'm doing, even at these slower tempos, I'm not just mindlessly doing this. I'm really making sure that I'm really focusing on the very tip of the pick that's coasting across the top of the string, so I'm not digging in very much. I'm making sure it's a wrist motion that's generating the picking motion and that I'm relaxed. Um, you basically want to actively try to do everything as correctly as you can and, and if you can even do it better than you did the last time, that's really the optimal thing. Now, one thing I should point out here, so far in all these examples, I'm using inside picking. I'm starting on the downstroke, and on the fourth string, it'll end up being an upstroke, which is inside picking. Um, it, needless to say, when you get through this whole routine, when, when we get to the end of it, you're going to be doing it all again, beginning on an upstroke. Whether you do it right after the downstroke one, or maybe every other day you focus on downstroke on one day, and an upstroke start on the next day. It's up to you how you divide your time and, and get through it, but you do want to spend equal amount of time on both inside and outside picking for this. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to take it from a nice low BPM, 60 beats is what I started with. You could go lower than that if you want. And you're going to take it until you get to a point where it gets tough to get through that one full round. So uh, I'm going to bump it up to, let's see, I'll just say 100. Sack, there we go. Okay, so there it is at 100. I could definitely feel that it's a little tougher. I could probably go a little further than that. But what you're going to do at that point is we're going to continue to climb, but we're going to play less of the pattern. So let me try 105. What I might do here is go. You'll notice I'm not playing the full thing. I'm playing just a small amount of it with a little bit of a rest and then kick back into it. Okay. If I can do that, maybe I'll go. Notice I'm lengthening the amount that I'm playing again. The goal is to hopefully get to a point where you can do the full thing, maybe one time all the way through, but we're still dipping our toe in the water of these uh, trickier tempos in order to just get accustomed to it. So. Now, as you get higher and higher, that's probably going to be all you're going to be able to do. Uh, again, we're trying to reach a higher tempo that we couldn't do the entire thing. Uh, we couldn't perform the entire lick to, but that's okay. We don't need to. All we're trying to do is sort of like knock on that ceiling and hopefully, eventually over time, break through it. And I, I guarantee you, you will. So here it is, 110. Same thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do shorter amounts. Okay, and I'll do a few sets of that. I'll rest, 
and maybe after a couple bars I'll do it again. Right? And I'll do this for a while and then I'll see if I can do the long, slightly longer version. Right? And I'll do a few sets of that. This takes a bit of time. Um, don't be afraid to rest in between as well. Uh, take a minute and, you know, look, pet, pet a cat if you have one or whatever. Do something else for a second and then come back. The rest is just as important as the work because it's the rest that absorbs the amount of work you're doing and translates it into new skill. If you don't rest, you're not going to, you're just going to burn out. You're not going to reap the reward. So that's basically the idea. You keep going. Here we are at 115. All right, rest. Feeling pretty good. Maybe I'll try the longer one. So here's the important thing to, to keep in mind. When I was doing the slower tempo stuff, I wasn't dwelling on it for very long. Think of it as a warm up. You're just warming up. You're gradually getting higher and higher, closer to your ceiling. When you get to these trickier tempos, and let's face it, when you're playing constantly, you know, string crossing, uh, it takes a lot of energy. There's a lot more energy than to just go, you know, and play multiple notes on a single string and then occasionally cross strings. Um, when you're doing nothing but crossing strings, imagine here's a puddle and you just constantly are jumping over the puddle without any rest. That, that would take a lot of energy, right? So that's kind of what we're doing. There's really no resting point. Um, so for this kind of thing, it's gonna take you longer. You're gonna spend longer amounts of time on those higher tempos. You're not gonna blitz through them like you did going from 60 to 65 you're going to spend several minutes um, or more on any of the higher tempos, the ones that you're struggling with a little bit. That's part of it. You don't want to rush through this stuff. Uh, you can't. Let's put it that way. You can't rush through it. You have to uh, accept the fact that it takes the time that it takes. So at this point, um, you just keep finding your ceiling and then you, you go as high as you can and then give yourself a good rest, maybe for the rest of the day, uh, in terms of this exercise, and later, maybe the next day, come back and do the outside picking one. Um, if by all means you have all day to practice and uh, you know, you're a glutton for punishment, then do both. It's up to you. You have to experiment with how you prescribe this sort of thing. But the idea is have an exercise similar to this that you can use that's constantly, uh, consistently string crossing, and Start slow, work your way up, hit that ceiling, and then decrease the amount of work while you continue to push higher. You can probably play faster than you think you can if you give yourself less of a task, right? You're not gonna do the whole lick at a higher tempo. Eventually, you're gonna have to pull back on, on the amount that you play, but you'll probably be able to do a surprising amount at that higher tempo. And I think you'll find that over time, your string crosses are going to feel a lot easier. that is going to make your speed go up as well as your articulation. So check this out. Let me know in the comments how this worked for you and uh, I'll see you in the next one.